Good day, everyone. Hopefully everyone is staying warm when I'm recording this. We just got six, seven inches of snow the past couple days down here in Arkansas, expecting to get another three to seven tonight, which if you're not familiar with Arkansas is a rarity. So with that, we're not at a good point of handling snow. So I don't think I'll be out of the house anytime soon. So what better time than to make another tutorial video? Today it's going to focus on just the legend when you make a final map. I had a couple of questions and emails from students of, I got it to a certain point, but I still can't get it to where I'm completely happy with it. So with that, I'm going to show you a few tips, tricks that I've learned over the years. Obviously, there's going to be more out there, but I figured I'd do this to answer any other questions with it. With that, the data you see in front of you, and you can see at the top, it's a COVID book chapter map itself. So a couple of colleagues here at the University of Arkansas and the Social and Crim Department, Dr. Fitzpatrick and Dr. Harris and I were awarded an NSF last March on COVID-19 fear, behavioral mental health issues. We surveyed back in oh, March of 2020, about yeah, 11 months ago. And we were able to capture some spatial data with that. It was an online opt-in Qualtrics survey. But with that, we got a lot of rich information and data one of the write-ups or publishing outlets that we've done is a book chapter on the spatial patterns of some of the things that we measured. With that, if you're interested in the book chapter itself, shoot me an email. I can send it to you right now. The book is not available online. There's not even a link to it yet. It should be coming out pretty soon in 2021, but nothing's out yet, so I can't link to it directly. But with that, you can kind of see in front of you some of the data. So what I have here, and don't mind my drawing order over here, I have a lot of different ones. I've made tons of maps for the book chapter itself, and then just playing around with what I could and could not do with some of the data. So as I scroll down, you can see some different items within it, some different sheets that I merged in. But with that, if you look at it, we now have in the bottom of the grayscale. If it's black, there's at least one confirmed case by March 30th of 2020. If it's gray, there's none confirmed yet. And this isn't too shocking given the time point of when COVID broke out in the US. You think about it, that's when we were really first starting to find out about it. Some of the first closures, April, May is really when it took off. And that kind of shows you the mid, I say, the gray area of the Midwest to the plains. You don't see a whole lot. Obviously in some of our port areas, more metropolitan areas, there's a lot going on already just based on the transmission of COVID early on, even through January, February, and into March. And here, the white dots represent, we had at least one respondent per county within that. So that's just showing the overlap of where we have survey respondents. And then was there a confirmed case of COVID, yes or no, at that point? With that, these maps are kind of a couple different ones, and I was zooming in different areas. And you can see based on the drawing order, I have a couple different things I could display up here, could shift around to unemployment, the Com community vulnerability index from the Circo Ventures that adapted the CDC social vulnerability index to COVID specifically. So there's a lot of different things I could show on here. That's even some of your Lisa maps itself. But the purpose of this one is just to show some of the tips and tricks with a legend itself. So I have two legends on here and you can kind of see they're pretty identical. One's just larger than the other. But what happens is when you have a legend, you can see here, this is everything that's t currently in it. So I have everything checked, which isn't ideal, but I had a lot of data and I have displayed what I want for a final map. I don't need to do anything else because it's just a chapter in the book. So that's why I didn't need a title, the titles on it and a few other items that I usually put on a final map. It wasn't needed given the purpose of this project. But with that, say you're happy with your legend, you have the colors and everything you need, because based on the legend, it's going to be, let me scroll down. So typically in your drawing order, if you want to change the color, so I want, say I want to change the black to, and it's going to change over here for symbology. Say I want to go over and change it to just red. And I update that. You can see on the map, it automatically updates to red and the legend updates, which is ideal. So the more you change over here and your drawing order and the actual files, it updates the legend. So they're connected with that. You can even see here where I have the COVID case, John Hopkins is right here too. So this is where I have everything that is needed. Pretty good to go. But the interesting part is say there's something that you're doing that 
no matter what you do, you're just not happy with it. It's a color, the spacing, the sizing, whatever it may be, you want to shift it. If you right click on your legend and go convert to graphics, it's going to truly convert it to graphics. So now when you change anything in your table of contents, it's not going to update the legend that you just turned to graphics. It will still do the original one, but not the one you just confirmed to graphics. I say that because if you right click again and you go to ungroup, you can now see it's starting to ungroup each individual one. So we have the box around the rectangle and then the individual legend, COVID, survey res respondent. But if you even do it again, oh, it's not letting me there. Let me click on just, oh, it did individual ones for us already. Usually you have to do more than that. So with that, you have everything separated out. So it's truly ungrouped. So if I just want to change and say, I want to delete out the none confirmed and I don't need the text anymore so I can delete that. That's gone. I could take that out of the legend and I could just use that. When I say it doesn't update, so keep in mind, let me go back to where I changed it. When I change the red COVID back to, let's say now a blue, just to make it identifiable. You can see the one that I did not change in terms of legend changes back. So it's still connected with your table of contents. When you convert it to graphics, you're truly converting it to graphics. So it no longer is connected to it your data in the first place. With that, if you want to convert your legend to graphics, I recommend doing it at the very end when you're happy with everything else and there's maybe some spacing size issues that you can't sort out when you're just working within the legend parameters that you want to handle on your own. By all means, that's when I would recommend changing it to graphics. You can always, similar to what you would do in PowerPoint or anything else, you can always put a box around them all again Notice here that it also grabbed the other map, the whole map itself. So I'm going to unselect that or deselect, and then I'm just going to regroup. Keep in mind, yes, they're grouped together, but it doesn't mean it's connected back to the table of contents. This is still a graphic. So keep in mind, once you convert it to graphics, there's no going back. With it, you can always make another legend. You can always add another one in. So if I just went up here, hit legend and drew one, it would pop back up here for us, and I could change the font and everything with that. Same as you would before, because you can see here, I, once you right click and go on to properties, your text, if you want it to show a title that says legend, everything about it, you can still change in their format and properties of it. So with that, this is just a quick description of if you're not happy with your legend and you've spent countless minutes to hours trying to get it perfected, you can always convert it to graphics and update it as you see fit based on individual values or parts to it. If there's any questions about that, please let me know. Feel free to reach out. If not, enjoy. Bye.